All right, here we are with a Simpsons PCB to fix. Konami Simpsons four player PCB, and it's got all the edge connectors and the right ROM set on it and absolutely everything. Now this one's got a color problem, as you can see there, that's not the correct set of colors. Um, so, this has been sent in by somebody for me to look at. And so the color circuit ends here, that's the output of it, and it goes back through some buffer drivers and through some uh, line drivers and then through some RAM chips back here and interestingly if you go into the test mode we're missing the cursor so you can't do a, there's no red for the thing and there's your test screen now somewhere on this bench somewhere on this bench ah, here we go I've just managed to reset set it by grinding something out by accident uh, a second get into the test mode go back to that one for colour. Right, so that's the test mode that we're seeing. I'm going to put the side by side. I printed out what it should look like. Looks nothing like it. So we've got a stuck colour bit. Having a bit of a poke around at the end of the colour circuit. Over there, there's your red, which is the problem one. There's a problem with the red side of the circuit. I've worked my way back through this half, through here. Through the 273s, they're all okay, the signals are okay, all the way back to this RAM chip here, U51. Now unfortunately, when Konami made this board, they decided to draw a schematic for it, which is very, very nice of them to do so, because we're at that era in arcade games where nobody wanted to give schematics away. And what we found was that on the board down here, they haven't actually put U numbers, they've put board reference numbers, so 7G and so on and so on. Anyway, this one here, just by manually tracing the wires backwards to give me a clue is the chip in question that we're thinking might be a problem so if i show you a data the data pins for this chip are 9 10 11 12 is ground 13 14 15 16 17. so if i go on to 13 and show you the scope up there so you've got some output signal going on so i'm going to walk all the way along four there's 14 15 16 so i'm going to go to 16 there's 16, I'm going to move along one pin, 17, completely dead, All right, no output whatsoever. So, um, if I, a telltale sign sometimes with this particular type of RAM chip, which is a 2018, is if you piggyback it, you'll get weird shit going on, on the screen like that. Take it away. Uh, if I piggyback the chip, uh, let's see if I can do it one handed, now you've got it piggybacked in place. And I'll show you that pin 17 again, so we can do it on the camera, uh, and the chip, there we go, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, there's 17, and can you see that there's some attempts there at some life in that pin now, so that suggests to me we've got a bad RAM chip, so I'm going to change that chip and see if that fixes the problem. All right, a couple of days have passed now, and I've got back to this Simpsons PCB. So despite changing the RAM chip out here, uh, that didn't fix the problem. So I've been going through the schematic. Now, I had a bit of time to think about this, and there's kind of an intensity issue going on here. So it's not like it's one particular part of the colour circuit. It's affecting all the parts of the colour circuit. So I've got some uniformity where this, this middle block here is, is wrong. Um, so I've been through the schematic, now I started to go forwards in it, towards the output side over here. And uh, this is the, that's the red end of it, I think. I think I've got high, that's green, but anyway. Uh, here we go, red. So red goes through that resistor pack, the resistor pack's fine, I've checked the resistance on those. These LSO7 buffer drivers are absolutely fine as well, which brings us back to this chip. So 8E, which is an LS273 uh, driver, that's fine as well. Now I can't sort of show you how I know it's fine. Um, I can tell you that all the outputs are all changing. Now there could be some logic inside that's not quite right. I worked my way back. The RAM chip we know we've changed, which is 9G. I spotted that there are actually these board references here at the bottom corner. So just these U numbers, typical for Konami U, a number of something, and then a board. I ha just hadn't seen it before when I was looking the other day. So. I figured that, well, what the heck can be driving all this? So I started to look back at these ones here. CR012, blah, 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 blah. Right, where do they all come from? So, 
they come from over here. Now, what do we see here? Aha, you might say, an LS157. Well, immediately, um, they generate CR0123. So they are color RAM addressing uh, pins. They will drive whatever's been driven into those color RAMs and then out again onto the thing. So, well, the problem seems to be we have a missing red at the bottom. We should say exit at the bottom of the screen. I started poking around these 157s. Now the 157s in question, when I just take you over here, so I've got the scope, and I've got, here's three of them. Uh, there's one there, one there, and one there. So 7H, which is what we're looking at, has uh, varying pins. So if I look at some of the inputs on here, so I'll show you an input pin. So that's what an input pin should look like, and so should that, and so should, that's an output, that's an input. And the board just reset itself because I shorted two pins together by accident. And it'll say it's bad, unfortunately, after I've done a reset like that. So I'll reinitialize the board and show you what I'm seeing. Come on. Oh, still thinks it's bad. There seems to be some kind of trace fault there. I don't like that. I'll find that, but it's probably just me. I've disturbed something during... Uh, tell you what, let me just sort this out. There's a slight fault, I think, with the socket or something like that, that when I short out one of these chips... I'll come back in a second, let me just fix this. There we go. Right, so we've solved that problem. So we've still got yellow on the screen when it should be white there, at the crosshatch pattern. Anyway, what I'd found after, before having to break off, is if I go over here and touch this leg of this pin here, right, if you look at the signals coming into that chip there, that's not correct, is it? It's nowhere near what it should look like. So I followed that back and had the horrors going on in my life which I thought and I had this awful feeling over here so CR 0 1 and 2 so by the way pin 10 which is where we're looking there C02 C02 comes back over here and comes off this chip here unfortunately it's a large custom chip and it's actually this custom chip here in fact now I have attempted to reflow a couple of pins uh, around there that unfortunately the chip was slightly damaged on arrival I didn't notice. Um, I have reflowed a couple of pins, but it's not working. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to try is another technique which can sometimes solve this problem because it's high and it's not pulling down to ground low enough. If I show you the signal again, the issue here, certainly with this leg of the thing, I don't know if it's going to solve the thing completely. If I go through there and look at that, then what we've got is a signal which is attempting to pull low but can't and it can never reach a low enough threshold to trigger the chips uh, low level input so it'll never change when you when the chip is uh, switching its input this is a multiplexer chip a 157 so it's got two inputs and one output for each so four inputs four out uh, i do apologize let me go backwards one it's a quad switch basically a quad multiplexer with two inputs each uh, uh, for each output. So you've got an A and a B input, and then you've got uh, a uh, an A and a B, and also a, a Y for four, uh, four modules within it. And then there's a switch which selects between A or B, which goes out onto the Y. So when this one is selected, it's never going to output. Now if you notice that, sometimes, just odd times, it will reach a low enough threshold to drive a colour. But not enough for it to drive it completely. So and what we're going to try is, we're going to try soldering a resistor across it and see if that solves the problem. I've done this trick before with a low or a high where we basically try and pull the signal up or down and see what works. Uh, that's a 1K2 resistor, that should be enough to, uh, to drop it down to ground uh, and see what happens. So we're going to solder that across and then we'll come back and see, and see if that solves the problem. Where are we? There we are. Okay, after a bit of a fight and burning my fingers a couple of times, I have soldered a resistor across the top of that chip, and that should, hopefully, pull the signal down. So let's power it on. We'll know straight away, before we even go into test mode, whether it worked or not, because we'll get a white crosshatch, if we've got it correct. Oh, white crosshatch. Yay! That's exactly what we should have. Do, 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 and all that work. All right, so if I go into that one, yeah, go to colour check, just a formality. And, ta-da, that's what it should look like. And if I get me cheat sheet, which is this colour printed picture, 
Ta -da! Right, okay, well, I'm really happy with that. I'm going to soak test the board now. I'm going to uh, now let the customer know that that can come back to him. I'm really glad that uh, the custom chip itself isn't borked because that would have been a huge problem for us and I would have had to just return the board and say, can't fix it. But as it happened, a simple trick like that, that was a 1K2 quarter watt resistor, which will be more than enough to drag it down to ground. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave it to soak test. That's all we can do. All right, so that's another Another board repaired, uh, I know that some of the board repairs are completely out of sequence from when they've been sent in to me. Uh, you can see here I've got Space Invaders loom on the, in the bench. So I'm going to be going back to some Space Invaders boards in a few minutes. I have got a Tron board to come back to for my friend Johan. Uh, I will get it sorted, um, I'm just going to get it back on the bench and done. Um, it will be being finished soon. It's almost over, only a graphics issue to clear up on that one. Uh, I've got my own Tron to fix which had a graphics issue from October and I've never managed to get it on the bench so I have a feeling that that one's going to get fixed at the same time. <sighs> if you like this video please give it the old thumbs up and if you didn't like it you know, by all means you'll choose to use that button but uh, you know do tell us why you didn't like it. Uh, sorry about the, somebody told me about the seasickness for the uh, study for the cam. Uh, I'm going to try and get some more static -y stuff set up and you're going to see yet yeah, another repair bench because I'm going to be taking some of this stuff uh, home to do in the evenings because during the day here running everything else I'm not getting as much done sometimes as I'd like to do so I'm going to have a second bench set up at, at home which means another scope, I've got a spare fluke, need to get another power supply, I've got a monitor, check, 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 uh, soon build things, take some components home, ta -da! anyway. If you've just stumbled across us looking for a Simpsons Arcade or some other keyword that led you here and you like repair videos and what we do and you like the other stuff we do, hit the old subscribe button so you know exactly when more videos are coming and all the rest of it. So until the next video, which will be out very, very soon, bid you farewell and goodbye from The Simpsons.